good, good old warm original. Out at a farm in north central Illinois today, about an hour and a half southwest of Chicago. Some very special barn find cars and parts, tractors, some tree row vehicles. Haven't been to Illinois ever for the purpose of being in Illinois, so this is little bit new country to take a look and see some old farm stuff. Plymouth Coop I think was a 37 or 38 by the flyer. He'd worked on that one. It was in the barn. Probably more of a street rod build at this point. Not sure if there's quite enough there to do full restoration. They've actually, looks like, put a GM subframe on it. That was pretty common. A while back, but we've kind of moved on from that now. A lot more dropping cross members available, and you don't have to butcher frame rails. This old Chevy truck, vent windows, and pull down door handles. Fifty one would be my guess. Just totally rusted away. Then a tree fell on it in the woods. It would make good yard art. Or a parts track. A lot of the parts are pretty rough. It is a half ton truck. DeSoto front clip should be 55, I think. Mercury 52 or 3. Automatic. Somebody shaved those door handles back in the day. 8BA V8, power steering, power brakes. Power steering's very rare accessory on one of these. I don't know that I've ever seen it. It's even rare in 55 and 56. That thing Been stored in the barn too. Let's see if I can open the non shaved door. Unfortunately, the raccoons have been inside the interior. Very destructive pest. As you can tell, that interior was totally intact. There wasn't even wear on the driver's seat bottom and just destroyed it. Ripped the whole headliner, all the side panels. 
Obviously, they were taken off and laid in the car, but still destroyed. Very, very neat dash in one of these. You've got, I guess you'd call them aircraft style controls. I'll bet this thing was a very low mile car too. Cannot read that first digit. So we will never know. The paint on those odometer wheels, you see ages differently than other paint sometimes. Of course the first digit's the most important and that'd be the one worn away. And this old Ford, I think it was supposed to be a 40. Got the titles out here in the bags, but they're just very wet. 39. That's what that one was. Just a very, very butchered car. This one. Flat metal, very crudely welded in. Another subpar subframe with a terrible steering angle, butchered and plated over. Stuff like this is what I would see when I started in the hobby that's one reason I just don't like modified cars guys will take a good clean original which obviously this one wasn't but they'll get the idea to re-engineer it and remake it into something and if they don't know what they're doing and don't plan a lot of times the thing just ends up butchered and destroyed and really just a parts car by the time they're done with their hackery. Forties Ford Coupe. This one I think's 46 with those little park lights on there. Which is what the title says. There's the 40. That's a pretty neat car. It's got one repaint on it, it looks like. Interiors absent, including the dash. Somebody's old custom back in the day with 65 Impala tail lights. For a custom car, they don't look too bad. Old 46 Chevy pickup. These were the pre war design. That were revived post war. Most car makers took a break after February of 42, but Chevy trucks were built all the way through 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 46. So you can find one of these continuous of any model year. Although most of those warrior trucks have painted grills 
and then somebody's put a 40 Chevy passenger car front bumper on there, which is typical of how they just kept them going with what they had. And this still has the original crank hole cover, which used to be a really rare, hard to find part. Guys that still had that were proud to show them off and now they repro them in the catalog, I think for 20 bucks or something. <laughs> Another Ford Coupe, 40, six, seven, eight. The 51 coupe and another 51 coupe. Those are pretty neat cars. I really like factory black paint on anything from 20s to current. This has such a sleek look. Look at the rust in that thing. Just totally gone. See, so much daylight in this car. 51 Ford has one of my favorite dashboards. With the mesh and the repeating circles and the swoopy lines, it all just has a really neat flow to it. To me it's just quintessentially ideal design. Seats were reupholstered way back when. These cars were stored in the barn but it didn't matter too much for preserving them if they're already rusty when they put them in. <laughs> it's parked in 68. Man, the whole bottom of that car is just falling out of it. Out of the barn and up for auction. This bug's pretty neat. It's probably about a 70 would be my guess. I have never seen a Baja 32 Ford <laughs> conversion. I call it Baja because the front fenders are clipped, but it could be. I guess there's no stand-up headlights for it either. They did Rolls-Royce. They did 40 Ford. I'm drawing a blank, but if you remember any other fiberglass bug conversions from back in the day drop a comment it's kind of an oddball continental spare fiberglass lid and the replica more of a model a style bumper because it's flat that old thing's about to break in half from rust. Looks like it may already be. The original parts were stashed away inside. That one's really just parts or kind of would be cool yard art for an attention getter those old fiberglass pieces on it. Looks 
looks like this was maybe old trike. Still, bugs got built a lot of different ways back in the day. Far from stock. It's got a 90 plate on it. Nineteen fifty Ford. Forty nine and fifty are real similar. Door handles are the easiest way for me to tell. Forty nine had the refrigerator pull type handles. Chevy sedan. Fifty one or two. Uh, Mercury with a spare roof. 52 or 3. It's kind of a neat car. Pretty much identical car to that other, even down to the color. Plymouth Coupe, I think, was a 47. Plymouth's not that popular of a car, so one in this condition, unless you really were motivated and ambitious or sentimental about it, realistically just a parts car by that point. It takes so much to build them, so much work to put into one, and... It's difficult to find parts and people to work on them and for what good clean survivors bring it's just really not a lot of point cheaper to buy one done but at the same time the thrill of doing it and looking at a car when you're done and saying that you touched everything on it. There's a bit of satisfaction in that. Another pretty interesting buggy build. That one's got a 72 plate on it. Beer keg gas tank. Sounds kind of neat. Just a good 60s style build. It's like something you might open the pages of a 64 hot rod magazine and see. There's a 49 Ford two door. That's those refrigerator style door handles. There's one that the raccoons didn't find their way into. Very popular car when they brought them out. We find that they part out pretty nice. All the years I've done this, even 15 years ago getting started, the very first car that I parted out, I had no money. I literally took the first $10 of lawn mowing money that I earned when I was, I think, 16, and we found pieces of a 49 or 50 Ford that had been cut in pieces and dumped in the back of a farm, and they had brought it on a hay wagon to the sale barn and my dad and I were there and up to that point I had just collected hubcaps and license plates. I would filled a chicken coop with them on my dad's farm and I'd always look at those and I'd look at the years on the plates and I'd try and identify the emblems on the hubcaps and 
I'd wonder what did that hubcap come off of and I'd look up and identify them of course through paper sources because we didn't have the internet yet and that Ford that first ten dollars of lawn mowing money was first half of a vehicle that I bought and I sold that grill for hundred and fifty dollars because they weren't reproed yet and then the next month or so we we're at another farm auction and there's one of those something 60s car and back then $150 was what you'd outbid the scrap man for if you wanted to buy an old car and so it was a no-brainer to me to take that 150 and buy the next old car and ever after that the snowball rolled down the hill and it turned into what it is today So this is not a Volkswagen powered buggy. It's actually should be a Triumph. There's the rear wheels, the gauges. There's the engine. It's a bit of a what's it corner so if anybody can say for sure from what you see here let us know in the comments what that old orange buggy started life as throw so these Chevy's a 52 did want to look at the Mercury. This one's no option car. Manual brakes, manual steering. Those Mercury engines are desirable too because they've got the stroked crank. Not exactly sure what the intention is with the extra top. It reminds me so much of my dad. He would secure every load with rope. I remember when we'd take a flea market load home, he'd tie that stuff and he'd take that long rope and weave it through every piece of the load and tie it off at the end. We are out in farm country. Most of these farmers, they're pretty loyal to one brand. Red power, green power, orange power. McCormick Farm All. The early style hydraulic loader on it. I've never seen one that pivots at the front like that. Kind of interesting. Sold international tractor. Be pretty durable, handy piece to keep in use. Levelmatic loader. The Henniker cab. This area you start to see a lot more aftermarket accessories being issued for these tractors. 1066, just good, durable working tractor. 750 Massey Combine. Those are useful either for hobby farms or most of the time they just sell for scrap. It's crazy because a new machine is 
pushing a million dollars. Fourteen eighty six international. It's kind of a proud old tractor. Factory cab on it. Five sixty. I had a toy real similar to that I played with as a kid. I like these sixties tractors, they just have a good industrial design. Everything's a piece of art in its own way. Little cub. New idea balers. I don't think I've ever seen one of those. A lot of farm stuff is very regional see some areas where they had just more extensive dealer networks of certain brands or ones that are closer to where the factories built them. Some areas you see a lot of all over, some areas you see none. Of course, big brands, John Deere and International, were kind of everywhere. My hometown had a Minneapolis Moline and a Massey and an international. I don't know that we ever had a John Deere. Old home-built motorcycle trailer. That was quite a thing back in the day. It wasn't like now where you just go buy trailers. So that one, that would actually be really cool. Display some vintage bikes on it. 58 Chevy taillights. So what you'd do is you'd go back in the day to the junkyard and the first pieces you'd start with were the hubs. And these little bolt-on hubs on the end of the spindle, I don't know that those are Rambler, but the Rambler was the most popular because you could just zip four bolts off and those hubs would come loose and you build the rest of the trailer around them get your steel and it would be pretty cool to put an old bike on that and pull up to a show an old vintage trailer super super neat this was probably built World War II era those artillery wheels would have been about 10 years old at the time which is about how long people drove old cars it's got a some sort of a bulk grain or feed or some kind of piece on the back of it. Super neat. Volkswagen engine. 66 Ford. Four wheel drive track. Primer. Four wheel drive's pretty uncommon. It's a neat truck. The aluminum grill and standard dash. So it's probably a custom cab because it's got the Plastic door panels. I just always thought they all had the plastic dash. It's kind of a odd mix. Let's 
steering columns, fenders, seats and all. Oldsmobile striped 70 seats. It's kind of a rare one. That's a 64 Fairlane. more wagons of parts they'll be pulling out of the buildings. 37 Chevrolet front clip, not too bad. Pre-war stuff is so hard to find. Beggars can't be choosers, you gotta find something rough and make it work. Rims and tires. There's these old Mustang TRX wheels. There's some metric only designation. Only made by Michelin. They do limited runs of these and they're expensive. So that's one alloy wheel that Otherwise would be a popular upgrade, but it's pretty limited by specified tire. Old 200S Daisy wheels. A lot of rims to pick from. These are the old real magnesium. Wow, those are say five inch so those would have been for a 60s full size olds or pontiac wow super cool to find old magnesium wheels pretty rare I think that's a Bronco Dash. Those early Broncos are big money. Got the Elgin boat motor. Good original piece. It's a very small two-cylinder. That's pretty cool. And 56 Victoria. Regular two-door hard top, not a Crown Victoria or a glass top. Still a really attractive car. Little John Deere 111 garden tractor. And we've got a 55 Crown Victoria. Crown Victoria had the band over the roof. Then it had a little fancier back seat. It's a pretty neat car. Ford gave just a little more than Chevy did in 55 and 6. Chevy never really had a competitor to the Crown Vic. It's just a very special car that you don't 
very commonly see around. And the best barn find of the wholesale, 35 Pontiac. It's a three window coupe. And this is the eight cylinder car, which is pretty easily identifiable by the lever action, knee action, front suspension. So it'll have several key differences from the six cylinder cars. It's got longer front end. Of course, these engines were inline six and inline eight. And so extra two cylinders add length to the front sheet metal of the car. Eight cylinder cars are a six lug. This one is just very, very original. Good old survivor car. Parked in 75. Most of these have a single tail light. But there was an optional second light. This is, of course, a rumble seat car. You see the steps and rumble lids hinged from the top. Your regular lids hinged from the bottom. The latches broke in there because it free spins. Pretty neat old Chicago Cubs decal. And then some old fraternity type organization with a harp and a barber pole. And of course the American Legion. So, good chance this old car was driven by World War II vet. Parked with the old Firestone tires on it. The whole front end is different on a 35 versus a 36 even though they're very similar looking cars. And then your 35s have, I believe these were an option. They were something that not every car had, but most of your eight cylinder cars, you see them, six cylinder cars, it's kind of a split. One's got the Indian maiden hood ornament. Just a very beautiful Art Deco design. Another big visual identifier between 35 and 6 is 35 was the last year of the front door handle and the rear hinge door. Very original car, 50s era seat covers. Preserved and protected. This one has the factory banjo steering wheel. The radios with the car. like a spare speedometer in there. Good, good old warm original.
very very uncommonly seen car low production very low survival not sure what kind of crowd will show up here but this one's obviously got the most interest to me so we will see what happens Take a look under the hood. You can see that this car originally was blue and had been repainted green. It's just kind of weathered down. Neat patina to it. Catch the firewall tag. 2057 would be the three window coupe. Eight cylinder. So you can see early style casting of the block with the individual cylinder bores visible. Got the Indian head cast in there. Just a neat, neat car. These little standard chevron lubrication card. I don't think I've ever seen one of these on a vehicle. It just clips on to the hood bar. Pretty neat piece of history here. The old long tube horns, and the big question, is it free? Oh yeah, yeah this baby turns, look at that. I like it. Bumpers, hoods, fenders. It was a pretty rare piece. 55 DeSoto grill. All the customizer guys, they're old Mercury's. We could probably get 1200 bucks for that thing on eBay. These long cruiser skirts. Probably about the same, about $1,200. Just all depends who shows up to run them up. So here's the woods where these cars came out of. <laughs> like 39 or 40 Chevy truck it's a one ton tiny little two row harvester take a lot of passes to finish a field with that All this stuff lays here decades when they put everything out. This was bare dirt. It doesn't take it long to turn into a forest. Not long at all. Old F20 or regular. Couple of them. A 
resting peacefully in the woods. Few old motorcycles. There's a Kawasaki street bike. A lot of 70s motorcycles around. It's when they really started to be marketed pretty heavy. But a couple of these are on the rarer side. These old Honda 350SLs. I think about 71, 72. Bit of a dirt bike for the street, and you just don't see these around. I think these are the first ones I've ever shown here on the channel. Just kind of neat to get to see one up close for one time. And the old Yamaha, pretty similar to the Hondas. Guy had quite a taste for collecting just a about a little bit of everything. And there's some other seats and parts and wheels and custom pieces. Kind of a neat little painted peanut tank for a Harley. A couple more cars here in the barn. I believe this one was a 39 Pontiac. Just a few short years. This is a car that's very, very different from that 36. This one's all steel body, 36, still would have been structural wood. This is an older restoration, still holding up pretty well. New upholstery. This is modern, call it plastic fiber based. Replace the old original stuff that just breaks down from age. Any of those natural fibers, cotton, wool, the fabric just doesn't have good UV or oxygen stability. They just wear down and decay down and even a nice original untouched car just from the age you go to start to use it and it just breaks down this one has the deluxe banjo steering wheel it's a pretty neat accessory got the clock this one's really kind of almost more of just a refurbishment you see they just painted over the old nasty weather seal but it would be decent old car just to cruise around and not be scared to use. Let the kids ride in it. 39 Pontiac is similar body to 39 Chevrolet believe a lot of the door and window parts are corporate pieces that are shared, but the whole chassis, drivetrain, most all your body stampings are different. Got the deluxe hood ornament with the plastic insert. That hood ornament is actually the hood latch. Kind of a neat feature. So this car is an eight cylinder also. Pretty neat old rig. See the little cover piece in there. Forty seven Mercury. 
coupe. It's kind of got a 60s look to it. Pretty original car. Got the nog hide. Cadillac tilt wheel. Looks like this is one he took around to shows and things. Until it had engine trouble and got taken apart. Sixty six T Bird. It's kind of a rare one, it's a Landau. So it's got the special roof. Say this is the best car on the sale as far as preservation. Very good original car. Super, super nice. Let's see if we can find the mileage on it. 106,000. Tiny little bit of wear all the way around to let you know it's turned over. It's a pretty magnificent car overall. Ford really went all out on these and put a lot into them as far as design and engineering. I built a model kit of this as a kid. It's a pretty neat car. Couple more wagons of parts. Chevy double hump heads. A lot of 40s Ford trim moldings. One more car here. This one, they just pulled out of the garage. This is a 1936 Chevrolet Standard five window coupe. And this one's been unfortunately taken apart to be worked on and just left to sit. They say that everything's here for it, but when they're like this, it's just almost a statistical guarantee that there will be pieces that are scattered and lost and gone. Actually, no. 36 still had structural wood in the bodies in the first half of the production year. And then the second half, they phased in steel. You can see under the headliner there the structural wood in this body. That was pretty common all along in car production. They would proof the next model year's big changes 
the year before, phase them in, see if this old thing turns, I kind of doubt it. That engine is just antiseptically clean. Almost looks like it was factory replacement right before this car was parked. Because there's no grease or anything. It just has nice old black paint on it. To be preserved in this good a condition, this thing can't have that many miles on it. Take a look in here. Looks like 66,000. Very few of these cars got driven over 100,000 miles. Back then the old Babbitt engines would be pretty worn. They just didn't have the machining tolerances back then that we do today. They say the stuff's all here, but it's hard to say. I know for certain there ought to be a lot more little pieces and parts than this. I mean, the major panels are here. Just all blown apart for no good reason. The bumpers, I know, are 41s. The original 36 bumpers are gone. They're not here. Just take the right person to take this thing on and put it back together. So here's another look at the engine. You can see the black paint on that thing and little orange inspection marks. See if we find a date code on this thing. D23 is 6. So it's April of 36, which would be within the correct range for this car. There's your body ID tag showing five window coupe. All these old cars will be auctioned. We'll show that footage in the next video. Looks like there is one green tractor on this farm at least. Did find one.